have met many people who talk about how terrible their fathers were. I have also met people who talk about their wonderful fathers. Sadly, I do not know what it is to have a father because my, the man disappeared before I was born. So the less you talk about him, the better. I may not know much about paternal love, but I know what it means to be raised by a lady with the purest heart, from whom I get the name Rwamba. My story begins in a small town, Kerugoya. <laughs> Perhaps the one advantage I had is that Madame Rwamba, my mother, was a civil servant. So once in a while, we had bread and beef. Of course, we had a red Great Wall TV. I have, we had an ordinary childhood, my sister and I, but we have memorable times. I remember we would spend time adjusting the TV antenna just to get to the right stations. My mom had goats and chickens, so chores were part of our, our lives. And we had a latrine that was outside the house. So going to the toilet at night was a hassle. We'd have to wake up my mother, then we'd have to go out with her, so it wasn't easy. Perhaps that would explain why, as a young girl in a small household, my childhood dreams were simple. A house with a fridge, a wall-to-wall -wall PVC carpet, and of course, a toilet inside the house. Growing up, I never really thought about being a mother. Perhaps it's because I saw my mother struggle. So that picture with a girl playing with dolls was never really me. But the one thing I learned from my mother, who was a single mom, is that motherhood is about sacrifice. And my mother sacrificed a lot for myself, for my sister. Education was very keen to her. So even when school fees was a problem, she ensured that we got the best opportunities that she could afford to give us. Hi, mom. <laughs> Fortunes changed when my mom got a transfer to Nairobi. And finally, we were living in a self-contained house. We were cooking with gas because Nairobi landlords, you're not using charcoal and kerosene. And finally, we had a toilet that was inside the house. I could finally use the toilet brush. You know, before I would go to the supermarket and there's that line with happy and toilet brushes, and I'll be like, okay, that's, that, that, that looks nice. So finally, we could now shop and use toilet brushes. My first turning point is when I joined the University of Nairobi, underline the university. <laughs> I discovered a larger world, terrific Tuesdays, wacky Wednesdays, road trips to Varsha, and I also came to realize that people actually have more than one inside toilet in their homes. Like they have several toilets. <laughs> and in the process, that was not even the biggest realization. It was that people who had made it in life used a specific type of tissue. It's baby pink. <laughs> it's very soft. It's three-ply and costs twice the amount of the normal tissue. But I digress. <laughs> in the maze that is Nairobi men, I met and fell in love with one Isaac Maura, and he soon walked me down the aisle in a colorful ceremony. So first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes babies, then comes happily ever after. I, I was going to be the perfect mother, the one who breaks, bakes banana bread on Saturday, has 
her family watching movie nights in matching outfits. You know, I thought having children was as straightforward as having baby pink tissue in your toilet. Then life happened. I was diagnosed with stage four endometriosis. Usually doctors use big words. Endometriosis is a big word. But the long and short of it was that having children was going to be really difficult. So from a girl who never thought about having children, now I wanted children, but I couldn't have them. I felt incomplete. I spent countless nights wondering, why me, you know? But God has his ways. After various interventions, in 2016, I was expecting triplets. My heart was full. I started shopping. Everything in threes, everything, baby coats, car seats, everything, all the rompers, everything in threes. At 28 weeks, labor came. Of course, I was not ready. Nobody was ready. The babies were not ready, but they were here. On January 19th, 2017, my two boys and one girl arrived. Because they were not ready for the world, they were rushed into the neonatal ICU. Uh, the trauma and the things that I saw in that ICU is something I never really thought I would ever have to see. The tiniest babies were fighting one of the fiercest battles I've ever seen. They were fighting for life. They were fighting for breath. It was so difficult to watch children slowly wither to the point of death. And there was nothing that I could do as a mother. Two days after my babies were born, we said goodbye to my baby girl. After more than 23 resuscitations, countless blood transfusions, we said goodbye to one of my baby boys after three months. Three months later, after my babies were born, I went home carrying one child. And of course, I asked myself so many questions. I asked God questions. Why give me... I wanted one child. You gave me three. Then watch me, watch them go through them. I see you and just leave me with one. And taking a preemie baby was not easy. I did not get time to mourn my two babies. I had one who really needed my, my care, my support. I got so overwhelmed that I did not notice myself slipping away. I did not notice my sanity slipping away. At this particular time, I had lost so much. I had lost to death. 
I had lost to life. I felt broken by love. I lost myself to depression. And at this time, I think I spent so much time grieving the person that I used to be that I almost, just almost, missed out on life. Then God opened my eyes to a little young boy who was blooming. His name is Njiru. You see, to the world, Njiru is just a tiny little boy, taking slightly a bit longer than his peers to hit his milestones and grasp a few concepts. But to me, Njiro embodies strength, courage. He is a warrior. When everything was stacked against him, he won his battle for life. And I don't think I would be here if Njiro did not survive. For me, Njiro has saved me so many times. I'm yet to understand how such a little boy can have so much power. At this particular time, I was feeling lost. I was feeling heartbroken. But Njiru has been that pillar for me. My life with Njiru has helped me birth another baby. That is the Kenna Foundation. A happy place for mothers who have had premature babies. A place for families who are grieving and also dealing with maternal mental health. My pain has beautified me to be a better human being, to love harder, to be kinder, to be more empathetic. And I have learned to enjoy the here and the now. From, becoming, from being my mother's daughter to being a mother myself, I am learning to transform, to grow, to let go of fear and defeat. I am making peace with the fact that my past is what it is. The struggles I have gone through are what they are. So maybe when I wake up in the morning and tell myself, it is what it is. Maybe. That is just a way to keep myself sane.